When it comes to fitness, exercise, diet, and sleep are the three most important factors. But did you know, if you improve one of them, it'll also simultaneously improve the others. Sleep, studies have shown that if you get better sleep, you tend to eat better and you tend to move more. That's not necessarily true of the other two. So if you need to work on one of them, work on sleep. It tends to make everything better. You know, <clears throat> you don't think that they're all inversely related like that? They all impact each other. Yeah, like, but if you have sleep that's not ideal, yeah. it's crazy when you look at the data on how it affects. For example, there's that one study I brought this before. This was a controlled. That's why I like this about the study was controlled. People were in a sleep lab, and they put these groups of people in the deficit, same deficit, everything was the same, same yeah. calories, everything. They both lost the same amount of weight, but the group that had poor sleep lost fifty percent more muscle. Just the sleep alone wow. caused that to happen. And, I mean, obviously, you would you would attribute that to how important deep and REM sleep is to the recovery process, <laughs> and how important reco the recovery process is into building muscle or maintaining muscle. That's that's part of it, but it's it's probably it's very complex. But it's probably along the lines of a, a poor sleep, chronic poor sleep. Of course, there's degrees, but poor sleep on a chronic basis, like you know, you're getting six hours, oh, sorry, five hours, seven hours broken up. Not just your hormones, it tells your body um, we need to conserve energy. Yeah. And what it does is it pairs down expensive tissue, which is muscle, and it promotes fat storage. So it ramps up cravings, <laughs> reduces activity, changes hormones to get rid of muscle, store body fat. So it, yeah. because it's literally in, in, for most of human history, if you got bad sleep all the time, it probably meant you were lacking resources and you weren't safe. Yeah. And so your body is putting you in a position to survive uh, those circumstances, which is more body fat, less muscle, conserve energy, you know, type of thing. Oh, yeah, so. your por performance gets dramatically affected. And then that one study you brought up, where oh. it's like about um, injury. Oh, like, yeah. You're so much more susceptible to injuries. Like, that's, I mean, it makes perfect sense, but I didn't even think to trace it back to sleep. It's just like, oh, maybe there was like, uh, you know, it's, this is a mechanical issue or this is like some kind it of was tissue the, issue. It was the greatest predictor of injury. More than not warming up, priming, exercise technique, all that stuff. It was like, if you had poor sleep, your odds of hurting yourself like skyrocket. Even yeah. with good form, good technique or warm up. It yeah, was the, the, that's crazy. The, the greatest indicator. It's so hard to wrap your brain around too, how if that is out of whack, right, that you even going to the gym and lifting weights could potentially be counterproductive to your goals. Totally. I mean, we just recently had a caller that we talked to and, you know, she complained about MAPS starter being too much volume, which yeah. is what considered probably one of our lowest volume. It's a good postpartum or beginner, complete right. beginner program. Right. And, you know, uh, the, before answering her, like right away, I was like, okay, what, what's work? What do you do? Like, no. Yeah, something's going on. Yeah. For that to be over stressing but then imagine you're telling someone like that they need to they need to lose weight they want to get in better shape their sleep's all out of whack they're doing these workouts and thinking that the advice is hey you know what don't work out that many days or reduce the amount of volume uh you may think that doing that is helping you but instead it's actually slowing down the process of by you getting working better, out by working out yeah which so different than i think how at least I know I approached training as a kid. Like when I first started, it was like I would so that was sleep was such an afterthought. It poor sleep uh, is very strongly related to depression, anxiety, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, and of course obesity, muscle loss, injury. Uh, it's so essential that one of the I mean it, it's it, I believe it's illegal through the Geneva Convention to torture. Uh, prisoners of war through uh -huh. uh, you know preventing them from sleep. There's an old Soviet study. This oh is my. yeah, I don't know if you I know what these. you're talking. <laughs> and and there's they intentionally deprived it's so them. Bad. Yeah, they wanted to see how long people could go without sleep. Now on the internet to, they'll say to the point of psychosis. Yeah, yeah, they'll say oh this this didn't happen. Other people are like no this actually happened, but they they want to see how long people could go and they turn psycho. Yeah. And I think there's data that shows something like <laughs> something like. Um, like I think it's seventy two hours of no sleep, your odds of 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 mental psychosis are like the skyrocket. Like mm -hmm. the average person will start to go crazy, literally. If they and that's extreme cases for the average person who's not experiencing that level of of extreme sleep loss, the human body and brain is really good at compensating. So what happens is we have kind of poor sleep all the time, but we can still go to work. We can still kind of function. We drink coffee. You know, we, you know, we do things to kind of keep us ourselves awake and we kind of make it. And so you don't, you, and especially if you do that long enough, you start to feel like this is normal. It isn't until 
you really get good sleep that you go, oh my God, like how many people go on vacation yeah. and they're like, wow, this feels way different. Well, don't we like, I mean, at that point, don't we kind of reserve back to like a, more of our lizard brain? Yeah. Like, like we're just fight flight. Like we're just like yep. in that survival operation mode. And so e everything we do is like, less effective, but at the same time, we can just sort of make it through. Yeah, so the, the issue with sleep isn't that sleep is a challenge for humans, it's that our bodies evolved to sleep under circumstances that we evolved under. So, you know, the, the sun goes down, so it slowly gets darker, temperature cools down, We when, there's no more light except for maybe a fire, so it's low level kind of red light that's in front of you, and then you would kind of turn that off because you want to attract um, predators maybe, and then you would go to sleep and it would be cool. And then you'd wake up when the sun would come up. It would slowly come up and rise. The light would slowly come on. It would slowly warm up. And then you'd wake up and you'd, you'd go about your day. You're not doing anything at night yeah. because we're blind uh, in the evening. And so modern life keeps the sun up, uh, you know, essentially with, with uh, lights and electronics 24-7. Uh, we, we hit the pillow and expect to go to sleep. It, it would be like, like all of a sudden it's bright outside. I'm going to go to sleep for you know, for bed. Have you guys seen the studies on people that live in, uh, what country is it where there's like a whole period of time where the sun never goes like down? Alaska or like, you know, like places like yeah. Alaska. Yeah. Or like that. Oh, they have to really structure it because North, the, yeah. insomnia and issues around sleep are, are really high there because of the sun being up. Yeah, if I, hours. if I were to go back and think just, just in the, the, the 10 years that we've been together, um, this like single best or the top three best investments I've ever made, like in health since then, just like in the last 10 years, since we've been doing this, I, the two that come to mind right away are for sure eight sleep and like having at home equipment as far as like the things that oh, improve yeah. my health, like long-term, like those two things mm -hmm. I look back and I go like all the different biohacking stuff and all the different shit that we've tried or done or that I've implemented into my routine. I think eight sleep is arguably number one. If not, it's a very close number two to having and only the gym equipment only because I mean because remember when we first started this, I was the you're, anti you're yeah. resistant. Yeah, to yeah it. I was yeah. anti home gym guy. I need to go to the, uh, the gym. I needed to feel the energy. Like or otherwise I didn't get a good workout. But then I like the you know older version of me is like, oh I've really appreciated this like ability to go, you know, in and out of the house and just do a few sets and come back to it. And I've really changed the way I lift. I'd say that is, you know, rivals the ability for eight sleep to cool my body down. And then with the AI tech that it has in it to actually adapt to my That's the crazy part. individual body and figure out and then be tracking my REM and deep sleep and then figure out what is the optimal temperature at what time of the night at what. You know why that's so that's crazy? so sick. That's so crazy because... Um, Men are a little bit more stable, but women in particular, their their body uh, temperature fluctuations happen throughout the month. So they might find that they're more cold at certain times during menses or more warm or whatever. Men go through this too, depending on caloric intake. Your calories are so low now, you've been saying yeah. you're colder than you normally are or whatever. Activity, you know, all that stuff affects that. So what eight sleep does is it adjusts the temperature of your bed on the fly based off of how you're sleeping. Yeah. And it learns what works best for you. So literally throughout the night, it'll go up or down in temperature to ensure that you're sleeping best. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, stuff like that didn't exist before. Well, that was one of the things too, and not to, I'm not gonna, not trying to throw shade on our our, our, <laughs> our original you know cooling system, but the, the knock that I do have in comparison now that I've had both is that the Uller I had to manually set at the temperature. And it was just there. And it was just there. And, but once I had set that right. uh, with the eight sleep, it's like it did all the rest of the work. And it is it is adjusting based off the season and off of how my sleep is going. It's constantly- I'm all, wondering, is it t is it changing because- You know what I'll do- Because your calories are so low right now. So it's, it's funny you said that because I actually just realized recently like, oh, the bed feels colder than it normally does. But that's me, right? Because yeah. I'm- And so it's probably figuring that out based off of how my sleep is I'd going. I'd be interested on. to see what that does. Yeah, I'll look back at the, the, the stats, right? I can look at all the uh, the AI stuff and see like if it's now adjusting. Because it does. It's like there's there was times in the- in the year where you know at you know one in the morning it's dropping my bed temperature down to say 62 or now it's at 64 does it wake you up by slowly warming up in the morning too? i you know i didn't program that in I, it's, it's not necessary for me i love that I, yeah i know like because you wake up and you're an like, early riser yeah. so like i wake up without an alarm so i get up so late what time do you wake up? <laughs> yeah, eight o'clock oh you're an eight o'clock yeah yeah, yeah so I'm five like, yeah it's pretty easy for me to wake up do you at, go to bed yeah. at like 11 then new uh, midnight i mean i try katrina and i try and get in bed by 10 
Like that's it. That's it. Like if I like that's my. But goal. you're not gonna sleep then. No, no, because we you know have the tendency to watch a show sometimes, or we talk. Or last night I had horrible sleep. I had nothing to do with eight sleep or anything else other than like we. I was talking business, right? JT, Ter- terrible. Oh, that's the worst for you, bro. Why do you do that? Before nothing, you? It's, you know, it's not intentional, right? I'm, I'm having great dialogue with him, right? He's here. We're talking business stuff, and you know, it just gets my. And I, I can't. I have yet to figure out. Like, I mean, I have all these things, box breathing and tools that I've tried to implement, but. <laughs> It's you can't. I don't know. I it's like it's like it's like, it's like the business brain is well. It's, a, it's a blessing and a curse, yeah. right? Because when if I look, if you were to get into my, I bet you at that time you have the best ideas. Too. Oh yeah. If you yeah. go back, I still have since I've had an iPhone. Um, all my notes for years of like it's always late at night. Oh yeah, and yeah. It, you can That's just mine are you can just see like too. all this stuff because I have to get it out of my head or else it'll be even worse. Right? Mine so, are either early in the morning or late at night. That's why I have my best. Oh, yeah, late at night. I never late, have late, early late at night. Justin's what you say? I never have early morning ideas, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're yeah, non-existent. No, 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 I agree, too. I, I uh, uh, No, for me, it's early morning, late at night, best ideas. But if I start talking about conspiracy theories before bed, <laughs> no that way. That messes you? No way. Oh, that's funny. What yeah, is everybody's stuff? About, I'm sure everybody has. So your stress, conspiracy theories cons- before bed. World, world yeah. shit. Do you have stuff. something? Yeah, I mean it's 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 kind of a mix of both, like the business or uh, business conspiracy. conspiracy. Yeah, <laughs> how's this Adam, gonna affect the Adam's business? Funnel, it's a, it's taking money from the business, right? <laughs> Adam's a lizard person. Yeah, <laughs> son of a bitch. Yeah. No, no, there's certain or arguments, right? Arguments in the middle of the night. I hate that, dude. You're like, yeah, trying right, right about yeah. to go to bed. Hey, bro, it's anything I'm, I'm trying to solve. Hey, you know, like, like, Katrina could, could be pissed off, right? Like, no, that. I know when it's gonna happen. Because are you sleeping? No, yeah, what? I'll make it worse, dude. I'll wake up to way worse. <laughs> if that happens, no, it's like because now I wear mouth, mouth tape when I go to bed. Oh yeah. So I'll put the mouth tape on and then you know start to go to bed and then was just, that your wife's idea about? Uh, it? No. <laughs> yeah, I think she's no, wondering. no. Yeah. So I'll, I'll put it on. She's like, yeah, you, you sleep so much better because it helps with the snoring, right? But I'll put it on so and why then is I'll, it duct tape? I'll know there's gonna be like a, a conversation because she'll be like, "Do you have the mouth tape on?" I'm like, oh fuck, <laughs> take it off. Here we go. Today's giveaway on YouTube is Maps Anabolic Advanced. To enter to win, leave a comment below this video. The first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. Also, this month's sale is Maps Anywhere and Maps Hit. Both programs are 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. I, I, you know, yeah, I've told you guys before, right? The yeah, By the way, I never asked you the nasal strip. Did you like that? or did I you, did like it. I told I you, right? I went and I bought some. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, that's I was like, like a, this is a life hack for yeah. me. It doesn't it do anything for me. Oh, serious? No. It's your big beak. That's why they don't have a <laughs> they need I've had my beak <laughs> broken so a few times, so I think that's size. Wait, hold on. His nose is bigger than mine, bro. This is just as big as He said have a big ass nose. Go sideways. Go sideways. Come on. Sideways. Zoom in. No way. I, I mean, my, mine's mine's broken. Yeah, so Justin, you got uh, that on me. Justin's is beefier. Yours is beakier. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> more muscular. <laughs> mus- mus- I got I got more gains in my nose. All right, bro. Yeah, yeah. All I right. can't believe that doesn't help you. No. Oh, but wow. the mouth tape, and then I wear a mouth uh, guard that pulls my lower jaw forward. Yeah. To prevent me from snoring. Yeah. I'm I can't so put mine on until Katrina is. I have to get up out of bed, otherwise, it, like she gets all nagged out. She's like, oh, well, I'm not getting any tonight. So if oh I put, what? Yeah, if so I put, have to sneak it on. Yeah, so if she thinks she sees me put it on, <laughs> she tell her helps. That's like my it version even, of it the. Uh, I'm like, oh, I have sex with this. Doesn't care. She's like, no, I know you. Once you do that, I know we're not having sex. I'm like, <laughs> why do you say that? It's all oh, you kill it by saying that. Performance improvement. <laughs> that, tell her. So I, I think so, I can breathe better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's Courtney's uh, uh, jammies. You is know, it? Like, yeah. Yeah, I feel like every jammies spouse, come on. I'm like, ah. Is that? Isn't that a thing? Like almost every spouse has a like. Like oh, we're not having sex. Yeah, yeah. Like there's a sign, right? There's got to be a have, sign that Jessica does. You're like, ah, oh, shit. I no, it we don't have anything like that. But I have a sign that we're going to have sex, which is like if she goes, if she can take a shower before bed. Like oh, you want to put the you know the baby down? I'm gonna go take a shower. I'm like, okay. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, let's yeah. cover that one. Then I know we're about to. Uh, it's yeah. a, although I've, 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 although one Kenny time I got G's in trouble. I told you guys, playing. I got in trouble once because she's like, "Oh, I'm gonna take a shower." Uh, no, I'm saying I'm gonna take a shower, and she goes, "Oh, can I take a shower with you?" What does that mean to you guys? By the way, you're gonna take a shower. Wife says, "I'll take a shower with you." You yeah, just tell me we're doing a lot less mean? showering. Okay, <laughs> for for us, it's more like I'm gonna get clean. I'm like, ah. oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay, so yeah, that's rare. Because you shower 
sex is not that great. Yeah, but it, it typically it, is, it means, it let's be honest here. It is overrated. Well, typically for it, me, it like means last minute we're idea. naked, we're in the same room, lights are kind of on, like, it's you know, we're going to do something. But anyway, one time I assumed that I was wrong. We had big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> what makes you think we're going to have sex? I'm like, you came and take the shower with me. I don't oh, know. that's funny. Yeah, we're, we're naked. Yeah. I'm not a fan of that, though. Those are the, I'm like, you're Justin, I think it's overrated. I'm like, and, and Katrina gets mad at me because I'll be like, oh, yeah. I want to shower alone. Or she gets in and I get out. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I've realized I've I'm like an old guy now. I, like, I, I like I, I just like night time, like right before bed, you know, and then I have really good sleep. You yeah. know, it's just, can we ever like do something during the day? Wow. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done I mean, this in like, so long. I don't have like, any daytime uh, moves. I don't have, I don't have know, any like, Somebody can moves. see me right now. I don't know if this is okay. <laughs> no oh, way, dude. Yeah, oh, it's weird. like, it's weird. Oh. Yeah, like, I, I'm not like that, yeah, let's, you know, go to a closet or something. No, I'm, so I'm, I have, I'm not that I have guy anymore. Thing. I'm down all the time. I have time another thing that drives me crazy. I want to know if one of you do, because I, I know, I feel like Katrina's kind of like the dude in, the, in our relationship with this, where she talks about it like that to me kills the mood what? yeah it's like uh, are yeah. we gonna she'll like ask me at like five o'clock we're having dinner like are we gonna have sex tonight or what like <laughs> i'm like well i mean and i was planning on it like, yeah it kills it for me it's like i don't want like it takes all the you just, like, like rub really? my arm or something yes. <laughs> so that's that, the pressure no it's not pressure <laughs> oh, it's oh, just, I, gotta, I gotta perform like the, i don't know the, the the mystery and the suspense and all that is like it takes no, that out of it we're so different bro if jessica says to me she, you know why she won't tell me we're gonna have sex tonight because then I won't leave her alone until it happens. Oh, yes. Yeah, because then I'm like, oh, you oh, shouldn't you would have love said Katrina. anything. Oh, would love Katrina. Know, she wants to, she wants to forecast kitchen. it all, all before no, everything. No, no, it's no, just no. like, play she, by play. I'm like, come on. No, I end up following her <laughs> around the kitchen. I follow her yeah. around the house. She's like, get off of me. I'm like, you said we're going to have sex. She's like, yeah, yeah. tonight? Yeah. Yeah, no. And okay. then if I don't confirm it, then it's like, then it's like all night I'm getting like every half hour. So it's like, well, it's, yeah, too bad we're not having sex tonight. Wow. Yeah. If we were having sex tonight, it's Well, Well, if there was a chance that we were going to, like, it's not going in your favor by bringing it up all the time no, like just dude. let it be it'll happen hey speaking of which yeah. i think i might have messed up a little bit you know you guys know i got the vasectomy the doctor's like you got to wait a week before you of course you did it yeah dude it was, it was a couple days later you know we kind Why of are around. An animal i know i, I don't know I hope bro. your balls exploded it, yeah. well hey listen i'm sore i'm a little sore dude <laughs> I hope I'm all right. That's a weird thing to ask. <laughs> to hope for for your friend. What a mean thing. That would definitely, no more kids are having if that is balls exposed. I was just worried still about the, a window. I was just worried about the business. That's all I'm thinking about. Uh, all of a sudden, I'm brilliant. Like, you're smarter. <laughs> oh, all that energy was it going there. It does keep us up at night, so. You <laughs> know, thought of that? We're worried. You got yeah. in the clear yet. I, still I got, know. That's why I'm, I got I'm, like I'm still more. I'm still anxious. I think I'm more anxious about your vasectomy than you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Counting down. I'm worried that there's, I'm like, of course, this will be sour, right? Like, he gets in. There's like a 14-time window that he has to just be good and he's going to do some shit like this no, like breaking no, the no. rules like. no we need no we're good i'm good bro she jessica has already she told me she's like no way so we're good we're good it's you know it's funny because you're such a uh science guy study guy and i feel like the doctor know, tells going? you these rules oh that you no, would doctor, be the most. I, I feel like Justin and I would be more rebellious about something like that. Yeah, I just don't listen to doctor. I don't know what it well, is. We just don't even go to the appointment. Yeah, yeah so you guys are step. You guys don't even go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I, I, you know, I have a tough time because I feel okay. <laughs> so, like when I had my shoulder surgery, doctors like you had to wait this long, and this is a true story. I got my AC joint resected. They actually put in a catheter to pump a painkiller in there, uh -huh. and I was supposed to keep it on for I don't remember how many days. Keep it on. By day two, I couldn't sleep. So I'm in the mirror and I'm pulling the tape off and I'm pulling the catheter out and like you know, taping myself and whatever on my own. So I'm just a, not a good patient. Mm. I'm not a good patient. I'd make a terrible client too. I think if a trainer hired me, if I hired a trainer, I think I'd be terrible yeah. on that as well. We probably all would. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I got to yeah. tell you guys. I know. We could never do that. I could never train you. I could never train you. No way. Oh, you guys God. are assholes. No. You guys would get so good shape though if I did. Uh -huh. uh, you guys would get such good shape if I actually <laughs> trained you. You'd have to trick us. Yeah. <laughs> Into your idea. All yeah. trickery. Hey, remember what you said the other day? You yeah. wanted to do this? Or just, just tell me to do the opposite? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I got to tell you guys a funny story with my, uh, my 14 year old. So my daughter. She's got, she's always had just perfect skin, like porcelain, perfect skin. So she got her first pimple. It wasn't even that big of a deal. Oh, first wow. pimple. Where she was just, it? Uh, just on her cheek. It's not a big deal, you know? But she's like freaking out. I can't go to school tomorrow. Uh, what am I going to do or whatever? I'm like, dude, we I got- a gnarly one right here. On your, oh, you uh, told me. Tip of your nose. You told, it, it was in your like, school picture. Hello. Right? <laughs> Rudolph. Yeah. So she's all freaking out. Doesn't want to go. She's like, I'm not going to go to school, so- Jessica's like, I'll take care of it because Jessica's got a thing for pimples. You guys know that. She's weird about it. Oh, yeah. So uh, it was a nice bonding moment between them. It actually worked out pretty well. Gross. Yeah, but it was funny to see my kid 
freak out over this this small you know it's like did you guys well did you, did you did any of you did you either one of you guys have bad acne in high school or did you go through that insecurity i mean that's kind of common thing never for on teenagers. my face i had on my my back my back and shoulders when i was a teenager but yeah. never on my face who cares about that really right yeah I mean, it's sure. a face what about you did you no, go through just randomly yeah it'd be like volcano size ones you know but they it just out of the blue you know i'd have one or so and then like it, it was weird as even back then like it was girls that were like like friends of mine that would just look at me and then they come up to me and they'd just be like why and i don't know like and i was it's the uh, grossest thing dude i think they're just helping you know? but what about your face did you have bad acne as a, as a high school or at all as a, no, as a kid that's or? like what i mean i only had like one or oh or, wow yeah, random you didn't either right no big time so you i did so and i had it didn't bother me until I got like I look not re just recently I was like looking at old high school pictures and I'm like God I should have been so insecure about my face like, I, like, <laughs> it's like, I didn't realize how bad it was like I didn't think I I, I feel like, about my teeth I didn't the, I didn't yeah. feel that way it obviously didn't bother me so you had a lot yeah I'll start, I'll, bring, I'll I'll find a picture I saw this picture of me and I was like I didn't even think I had that bad of acting did you ever I, do anything no you that's why I didn't it. care it didn't bother me I don't know why wow. I should it should have bothered me wow I, I was really ugly. I what? had that going on. <laughs> yeah. I had the two front teeth were all crooked. I don't know what was going well, on. You Did you try and grow whatever hair you could hey, on you your got, face? Hey, dude. And later, God's like super handsome. <laughs> <laughs> like in your 20s, you just got beautiful. You know, hey, it's not really. It's just there was such a huge discrepancy. That's what it is. No, like, you went bro. from like really ugly to average. You got to so post. Me, hey, yeah. no, no, no. We got to post pictures of you, bro. And you're like peak competing. You look like a, you look like a, what's his name from Superman? You look like a, the actor that played Superman. Stop all it. Like, all all blue steel. Just ding. Yeah, no, on the teeth no, and everything. No, but yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know that I I had it that bad. But I only had like a like a one year phase. Remember, I told you guys I I sprouted up like crazy height during that time. Yes, it was that Weird. year. I wonder yeah. it had to do with the hormones or something. It had to, right? It was just like that junior. Year. So I went from like you ate a crappy diet the whole time. Oh yeah, I never ate processed like, food the whole terror, time. Fast food like crazy. Yeah, I didn't grow out of that until even I was a trainer eating bad food. I didn't. I didn't stop. I didn't clean up my diet until my mid mid to late 20s mm. yeah i did you go i mean didn't you go you ate pretty bad for a while didn't you, you know or? compared to what i hear from other people not so bad because at least because my, my traditional parents right my mom would cook a uh, home-cooked meal every night it was always three course so i always had that right but breakfast and lunch were typically you know yeah. typical garbage i went off the rails in in uh college that's where it really got because it was like <laughs> I live next to Carl's Jr. and I live next to like some of these fast food places and I would just hit it up in the morning and then when I get home and this was, I was eating a lot of calories, you, dude. You know, when I was- when I was moving a lot. I have to say- a lot. I have to say, didn't, isn't that the story that you said where you bought a can of spray cheese and something else and just- Yeah, yeah. Crushed yeah, it on the yeah. way home? Uh -huh. yeah. Disgusting. Yeah, easy I, cheese was a regular. When I was 17, 16 or 17, I, I was uh, trying to bulk real hard. And I I went to Hometown Buffet. You guys don't remember Hometown Buffet? Yeah. Sure. Okay. This is like you eat all, all, all you want all day long. Stacking plates. So. Yeah. So I, I went with my cousins and we thought we figured out the hack because we go in the morning. We're like, we're not leaving. So we'd stay there. <laughs> stay there all day. All day. Yeah. We stayed there all day and just ate so much, <laughs> so much terrible food. We ate, we would eat uh, like a. Yeah. You would think somebody who worked there would like pick up on that. Yeah, I don't know if you. I don't think they have a time limit, do they? Dude, you might have a time. You limit. You sound like my friends no, in college. It was all these. I don't think that many people actually stay there for eight Oof. hours. You know what I'm saying? Oh no, we were there for like probably six, but we'd go, we'd go starch, protein, dessert, and we'd take a break. Starch, protein, dessert, <laughs> take a break. We must have gone through four or five. You know, uh, back then that would be really crazy to do that, and very few people probably even have the patience to stay there. But today, with like social media and your phones, I could totally see that. I wonder if that's been an issue before, at these like like these places. They have where, to have a time limit now. You would think so. Yeah. Look, you have up, to. look up time limits for hometown buffets. buffet. <laughs> yeah. See if that's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. But I, yeah, we went there and just crushed it. And I remember I, I, I gained weight while I was there. It was all water, but I'd go weigh myself afterwards all successfully happy. Well, yeah. that was a regular because like we travel a lot with the football team and, and where are you going to take football team? you know, to go eat. Like yeah. we, we just take over. Yeah. So we'd have to like go to a lot of money places. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> was, oh, yeah. Dude, dude, people got scared and just laughed, you know, wow. it was funny. Yeah. Just stacking like 10 plates. Like, do you remember Justin? Cause you were, you and I are more like each other with the, like probably the fast food and eating bad food. Like he, I don't think you were as much. Do you remember the transition of that? Like, uh, I mean, I remember there was a point for me 
where that was staple. Like yeah. At at least day. A, yeah, every day there was some fast food, whether it was driving through McDonald's for breakfast or dinner at Taco Bell or whatever like that. I was definitely ate terrible, right? Even into my 20s. And yeah. then there became a transition where I went away from that and then mm-hmm. I never came back. Like it was, it it after I cleaned it out of my diet. And I just get diarrhea. Yeah. yeah. Then it would just, it would, it would destroy me. And I, and even if I wanted to go back, I couldn't go yeah. back. I went through levels of it because it was like, um, there's like the Taco Bells, there's the the Burger Kings, and you know that sort of there's like realm, a, and then you get into like you're right, you know, there's, then you stages. Get the, there's yeah, because the, In and Out, rest other restaurants, yes. yeah, In and Out, and yeah, I don't so, even count In and Out as fast. Food. I justify that's still allowed in my that's still allowed. In and Out is different level, I would say. It's not fast food. It's well, but on. I worked in no. the restaurant is it's, my it's point. So fast food. it was like a constant battle for me because it was like. I, I was used to, when I was at home too, I had a lot of good home cooked meals. And so that kept me in check. Uh, and then when I was in college, it was like fending for myself. And so I, I, and that's why I went to get a job at a restaurant. Cause I was just so sick of cafeteria food and so wow. sick of like, it just it didn't feel good. And the, the funny part is a lot of my friends that were like big guys, they always make fun of me cause they'd order like you know, crazy burgers. This I would always order like chicken sandwich or you know like chicken nuggets and <laughs> <He's still getting laughs> you know, dude. Even back then, I was getting fucking made fun of, right? Uh, you know, so I wasn't like fat enough, you know. And here I'm like super fat, right? <laughs> so I'm just he's never, guy, I never really skinny, fit in, dude. He's a skinny, skinny yeah, guy back yeah, in football. That's why he never worries, dude. Yeah. He hung out with 400 pound linemen. You know, yeah, like, I got like, friends that are way bigger. Yeah, yeah. Like, trust me. <laughs> What's the worst? The worst fast food place has got to be. Ta- is it Taco, Taco Bell. Bell? Arby's? No, Taco yes, Bell. Arby's? No, no way. Arby's no is way. fine. Yeah, I had no Arby's. Way, way, bro. Dude, it's, what are you talking about? Talk at about least you get a lot of bunch of meat. Like it's not it's the really. ones that are all like, it's like deli meat and it's like melted cheese on it. I, I think like Subway, dude. They, they give you the. Sh- I'm it's sorry, just bread. Dude. It's just bread. Yeah, it, and then like they they basically the uh, meats like paste like they I, squeeze it out of a tube and you're like Ugh. I saw someone doing a critique on Subway. Actually, I saw a little viral clip going. Uh, it was pretty funny. They were talking about. Um, he basically was like bashing and it had to do with like inflation. Like, do you remember uh, the big promotion or, or the campaign that, uh, that subway was famous for was the $5 foot long. Uh-huh. They don't do that anymore. It's it $6 for six inches. Oh, that's their, that's their big. So suck. they cut the foot long down, bro, $5 foot long. And then $6, six inches is what is the, wow. is the promo. That's like the big selling point. Now, how, wow. what it, talk about crazy inflation. Like it wasn't that yeah. long ago. The five dollar foot long was the big ad. Wow! Like, oh yeah, get you get your favorite five dollar foot long, and you know, you know you what they're it. doing at the uh, with a lot of products is to try to reduce the the price rise. Is they reduce the servings or the like the how many how many yeah. squares of toilet paper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, oh, the price only went up two dollars. A lot but of people look at it. There's like severe. Tons of people don't even know that that's happening right now to you, and no. you don't even realize it in your when your like your toothpaste tube has you know point five less ounces. Yeah, and like yeah, yeah. all these l- products that you've been using forever. You don't ever really like, who knows? Like, do you know how many ounces are in a tube of toothpaste? Like you probably don't know. So you have no idea that point point five is missing. At what point do you think the GLP ones are going to be used to save money? You know what I mean? Like you spend money on the GLP one, but you save money on food because of, I mean, I'm, you made such a good prediction. Hmm. This was before I had even started the trisepatide and I can't agree more now with you because of the, how I feel of like how turned off of eating any food I am most certainly junk food snack food yeah. is so unappealing to me that we have to in the next year start to see stats that come out with like nabisco and like all oh, they're this. panicked yeah they they gotta they're be panicked. losing do you mil- know what the, millions do you know what their stats are have you guys seen the stats on fast food eaters can you look that up doug to see if you can see anything happening right now if there's any trends in that direction at so least if you look at sna- if you it. look at snack food eaters and you look at um this is like all consumers, snack food eaters and fast food eaters. You have a range of customers, but a significant percentage are considered heavy users. So like fast food eaters, there's people like us who all go get fast food, you know, w- twice a month or something like that, right? Yeah. And then there's people that get fast food and these are the-, the Every cult- day. Yes. Yeah. Or multiple times a day. Yeah. Same thing with snack food. So this is why these companies are freaking out because it's not like they'll lose a little bit. It's like if our main users go, yeah, then we're screwed. Yeah. We're going to lose 30, 40 percent of our gross revenue. <laughs> it's so funny revenue. when you say it like this. sounds such like a drug addiction, right? So similar. It uh, is. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that strange? Yeah, yeah. Because you have people that partake yeah. in drugs. Yeah, like I have it. a little bit of wine. Yeah, yeah. And then you have yeah. alcoholics or yeah. drug addicts. Wow. Like I didn't even think of that. Uh-huh. That's terrible. It is. It's very so much so like that. 
Yeah. And you like hard to, what do you see, Doug? Well, in 2023, Walmart CEO said that Ozempic and similar drugs have caused its customers to buy less. So they're actually wow. tracking that. Already? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it, is it Walmart that I saw? You know what I'm seeing too, what's happening is so like what we saw with uh, Oprah and oh, oh, Costco. You know, Costco is now selling semi-glutide. No way. Yes. Okay. Look it up, Doug. No Listen, way. I'm yes. going to say this again because I want to remember, I want people to know that it was, it was stamped, time stamped. We said this. This is a culture shifting medical intervention. This will be in the same category as birth control. How birth control caused was one of the main catalysts for the sexual revolution. It changed society. These GLP ones are going to do the same thing. It's a cultural shift, is what we're going to. I'm not only going to agree. I'm going to say it's going to be bigger. Oh, because it's not one sex. It's both. Oh, yeah. Right. So it's yeah. like the the effect. Well, we're going here's to why feel. I say it's this. It's 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 as big. No, I get why birth say. control is affecting shifted a, the a way natural. You do. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a natural yeah. human innate desire and so is eating yeah and so when you shift those that dramatically it's going to have far-ranging effects okay. some of okay. them we can't even predict costco adds ozempic prescriptions for members through virtual weight loss program wow, wow. hey speaking of, of medicine it's i gotta tell costco you guys too. Bro, everybody li listen i'm not even we're not even uh, sponsored i don't even know if i want to say the company but it was interesting so jessica we were all sick right last week and, and jessica started getting like severe migraine she's like i think i have a sinus infection she goes on and we have good health insurance she goes on to make an appointment with a doctor, booked. They were all booked for months. She's like, I have to go to urgent care just to see a doctor in case I have a science effect. I'm like, this is ridiculous. So she was in so much pain and she could, she didn't want to leave the house. So I went online and I said, I wonder if there's a way that I could get do a virtual appointment. I'll pay out of pocket, however expensive it is. And I went online. There was a company, there's several companies. There was a company. Okay. Ready for this? Yeah. 35 bucks, 35 bucks. You do a virtual appointment with your doctor yeah. and then you get your prescriptions and your insurance pays for it. That's it. Yeah, you'll have to talk to JT. One about time. Stuff. He's all he's all wrapped in the telehealth and the, that world. And Bro, you could pay 45 bucks every three months and you get the appointments for free was yeah. what this company offered. That's crazy. But they can't check your prostate. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why did you can't do that. You're Sorry, right. Adam could do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's okay, you're all right. If you got a buddy. What are friends we'll, for? We'll, we'll, we'll talk you through it. What are friends oh, for? Anyways, it's, it's a small anyway. job. Anyway. Hey, I, I read a study on the on the Bonobos. <laughs> I don't know why this. Bonobos? Think of them. The Bonobos, yeah. yeah. Am I saying it wrong? Bonobos? Bonobos? I think it's Bonobo. Who knows? I'm not the person to Do you remember that book that you read, Adam? Yeah, uh, Sex and Dawn. Yeah, that talked about the Bonobos and how, oh. They use that They use that group to to say that that's the closest uh, like humans are supposed to be like that, right? Because yeah. they just have sex all the time. They never fight or whatever. When are we going to start, stop comparing us to apes? Yeah, I know. It, well, yeah. so they actually did another study where they looked at bonobos, not in captivity, but in the nature. Because the problem was when you put changes. bonobos, you put bonobos in captivity, it turns out one of the ways they handle stress is lots of sex. Kind of like how humans, if you put us in prison, we're probably we, a lot yeah, different. Go to the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they looked at them in, uh, in how they were in nature. And it turns out bonobos are more aggressive. Male bonobos are more aggressive than chimpanzees even. Really? So the whole theory about bonobos or whatever, it's baloney. Huh. It's not true at all. It's a classic example. What do you call that when you, you go into like a study with already your bias and so yeah. you're just trying to prove your, your yeah. bias? It's, it, feel, it feels like that. Yeah. Been, like to Justin, your point, I feel like we've been trying to... Yeah, you know. we're trying to wedge that in because it fits with that theory, right? The original theory that we evolved from apes. And it's like, if you really go back and analyze, like there's a lot of holes there. Yeah. And it, and again, it's like, we, we think we have a definitive answer, but, uh, you know, when you really put a, a, a good um, look at into a lot of these things, like it, it's interesting, like that they haven't, they still haven't really figured out like. No, and then you look at it, like we, we have a closer digestive system to like a pig than we do like a, an ape. Exa or, exactly. Like, mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, so this part of us evolved that way, but then this part didn't, and it's like, mm -hmm. uh, it's, again, it's you're trying like to- Maybe it's chickens. You yeah. You ever hear We're actually more closely related to chickens. You ever hear vegans say that? Like, gorillas are vegans, you know? Yeah, look how jet they yeah, are. It's, uh, yeah, that's not the yeah, same yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Yeah, anyway. So uh, uh, another interesting study um, I read on the value of sports. You guys will like this one. So yeah. I'm going to pull up the study for you guys, because um, you guys are big- you know, sports advocates, watchers. You guys like the entertainment yeah, of it. The, the sports balls yeah, yeah. Big, were big with us. Here's the title of the study. This came out of uh, Waseda University. The title is The Joy of Sports. You ready for this? I'm about to make you guys super excited. Mm. How watching sports can boost well-being. Yes. Well-being. So sports beyond entertainment foster community and belonging, benefiting both individuals and society. Despite its recognized positive effects, Limited evidence exists on the link between watching sports and well-being. To address this gap, a team of researchers conducted a multi-method 
research and found that sports viewing activates brain reward circuits leading to improved well-being. Popular sports like baseball notably impact well-being. The research offers insights for public health policies and individual well-being enhancement. So just watching sports, they're showing in the study is like, it's pretty good That's interesting. for people's well-being. So is there is there any uh, scenario where you see yourself at this stage of your life? No. I, I disagree with you. Wait a second. I disagree. Right? I talked to Adam about this. Okay? All right, all right, all right. Go for it. And now here's the thing, right? I want to hear. I want to hear what you, you thought. Do you think I'm thought. into gymnastics? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I think you wear a leotard and everything when you go to these. No, meets. you go watch your kids. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, yeah. you go watch your kids do gymnastics. Okay, right. right? Yeah. You've seen signs of uh, you know abilities, let's say, with Aurelius, and um, let, let's just like play this out a little bit further oh, along, yeah. and like where he goes, his yeah. interests, like you know. You might find yourself sort of coming into this community, like learning 100%. more about it, deconstructing yeah, it. You're right. Like you know what I mean? No, you're right. Um, but yeah, I, it, I'm actually I hope for that personally, just oh, because dude, I, I think you're gonna get so much out of it. Oh, I will. There's if a I box I haven't checked in yeah. in business for me, and that's like to be able to have like a you know luxury box or whatever like that that we can do and i can't do that through this business because you do have no we gotta desire pull to you that. in we're, we're working yeah. on it so <laughs> the supplement company i'll give so, you that <laughs> that's, we got a trader give yeah. you a supplement company. so that's it I get first a right box. the supplement company and then we can yeah, then we uh, get the luxury box we'll get, the we'll get our uh, that's i mean that's like a serious thing that and i've already just accepted that's not going to happen in this business because I, I need all four partners to be excited about that and i'm like well i guess just i'll just chalk it up for one day when I'm older, Katrina and I will have season tickets somewhere yeah. and we'll watch every game. You know, I, you hit the nail on the head, though. If if my kids really get into a sport or any activity, then I'm going to get into it uh, yeah. just to support I, them. And I, I, of course you would, And dude. I think it really is that way. I think it's inevitable, dude. He loves that shit, dude. Yeah. He loves it. I know, like, everybody tries to tell me, like, oh, you know, kids change. They get all this snap. You can see it, though. You can. Yeah. You can just see. Yeah. You can see a kid. And even, like, his, like, the, all the things that challenge you with him and kind of frustrate you are also all the attributes that make yeah. good athletes yeah. you know pain in the ass like yeah. you know contrarian like rebellious like yeah. you know hyper like all those, those things that make that makes a good athlete yeah. and so he's and got an he's, arm on him dude you got to see him throw he mm -hmm. swings a bat you know i never practiced with him i don't even know how to teach him he just i know how to hold the bat and he yeah, hits yeah, the ball yeah. you know uh most of the time yeah, he likes that stuff. So we'll see. My my youngest daughter too. My one and a half year old. This must be my wife's genetics. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My youngest. She just learned how to walk. Okay, like literally just learned how to walk, and now she walks around the house picking up heavy things, and she likes to show me. She looks at me and she smiles, and then she'll lift like her toy. Like she has a car that you sit on and ride. She'll lift it, <laughs> or she'll lift up the big gymnastics blocks or whatever, and then she'll walk across the house with it. What is going on? <laughs> it's yeah. great. No, yeah. it's coming. Yeah, dude. it's a good yeah. time. I think there's well, I'll, I'll be I'll be definitely involving you guys because you know my coaching ability and ability to teach them stuff is limited. <laughs> so past a certain point, yeah. But you know what though, like, yeah. if you are if you're open to like what Justin is saying that they they get into it, you get into it. You, we already know all of our personalities. You're obsessive. Yeah. yeah. So which is like what I'm praying for is like you're going to get obsessed about like a sport, and then we can finally have these well, really deep I hope great get, conversations. My hope. Hope, totally. Now, my hope is if he, that, that he gets into wrestling or some kind of grab. That I already love. And that would be amazing. No, I hope he does something you totally are uncomfortable with. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mystery loves company. He just bro, wants to <laughs> uh, gymnast I mean, and I'm actually excited because Everett's completely done. He's not, you know, he doesn't want to do it. Your oldest just crushed it. He's crushed it. He just won first place. So wait a second. He just, he just won this tournament and now he wants to That's be That's my oldest. No, the youngest. Oh, you're yeah. talking about uh, Everett. Everett's like... Um, He's having a hard time because he's already kind of mentally in that space where it's like, you know, when you're when you're like done, like he, he's already kind of there and wants to move on. And and uh, we just found a school that just opened up uh, a Claudio Franco Franca school. For oh, jujitsu. Jujitsu. Yeah. Which I don't know anything about. I've, I've done a few sessions and whatnot, but I don't, I don't know anything about it. But I was like excited because it's like it's something where I'm like, I don't know anything and I'm going to learn it with him as yeah. we go. And I'm. You know, that that's a little bit more my speed, it's a little more aggressive, a little more, you know, stakes and, and strategy. And not to say that like gymnastics doesn't have strategy. It's just not like um it's a different type of strategy. Yeah, it's yeah. it's more like um uh performance like like with no uh you, you have to be able to shut everything out and then just perform to perfection and everything has all the movements are so intricate uh this is more like well, you you know, let me try this and yeah, yeah yeah exactly is this gonna work is this not gonna I work i think jiu-jitsu would be amazing for you 
like yeah. just your personality and like your competitiveness, but then the type, the like the type of God, I would patience. Hate to, I would hate the, to go against you guys if you were good at jujitsu. You're both, you guys are both mooses. I would, I, 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 I hope, like, I, I hope Max gets into that. That's something that we hope. Oh, you know, it's funny. Did I tell you guys? I didn't tell you guys. This. But I'm like Adam. I didn't want to get into it because everybody. I know that's every how I, podcast. But you know what? Though, if like, your I'm son is, that's guy. okay. Like, so yeah. if my son's into jujitsu, and then I, that's what make, drives me into it. I'm yeah. all about it. But because everybody else is doing it right now, it makes me not resistant to do it, right? Because yeah. how contrarian we are. Oh, I don't want to do it because everybody else is doing it. But hey, my son is. That's why I'll go do it. Yep. But uh, I didn't tell you. So we finally got the 14th book done. And so he, like, my son had that wow. rock shining kit up on my counter. So of all, like we've done this so many times now, like with Legos and all stuff like that, that like right. I was so surprised how long this took. And I wanted to like, I totally didn't want to push it. I just wanted to like see, you know, like, is he just going to like let this toy sit there on our counter? Every, he did it. Yeah, of course. Of course he did. He's done it every time. But I, I thought I was, <laughs> I was more intrigued by the patience of waiting and like, you know, oh yeah, dad, I'll read a book today. You know? Have you tried the kit yet? So, so this is where I'm getting at. So we opened it up, right? I had never done these before. Like I just know of them and I thought, oh, this will be cool. He's into rocks. And so that was my idea. Uh, and so I opened it up to go do it with him. And I don't know if you guys have, but I didn't realize this. Like, it's not like you go plug it in and then it's ready in an hour. No, it takes probably days. It takes weeks. Weeks. Yeah. So you put a rock in there and it tumbles them for what? a long ass time. Yeah. Right? There's, there's four cycles of three days each. So you have, you have to go. So there's the the Good thing is patient. I, I know. know. I, was say. I felt so bad. Like I'm reading it and I'm, I have no idea. Right? I'm like thinking like, oh, we'll plug this in, and then later tonight he's gonna see some cool rocks. Like, no, that's not how this works at all. There's <laughs> there's like four stages. Stage one is like core the the, the the like the core stuff that's in there. It it makes the rocks round, and then the next one shines them up a little bit. The next one polishes yeah, it, yeah, and then the course. next one finishes of course, it. Of course, of course. And it it tumbles all day long, twenty four seven for like it's wow. in my it's just tumbling oh, right wow. now. It hasn't stopped tumbling for like, you know what you're son will probably like uh we're gonna do this with our with our kids um silkworms because then you can watch them build a cocoon turn into a butterfly or whatever you have, like kits or yeah like, like little farms or yeah whatever? dude oh interesting. yeah he, he, he it's would, great because they learn like. how to take care of an animal they see the different cycles of life or whatever oh yeah he would like that you but i'm so them. fascinated with his patience like i was i was so frustrated with that i bought something that this poor kid <laughs> you want to see the <laughs> wait forever to get <laughs> yeah. it and yeah. then yeah. as he gets he waits yeah. another and you look like, like millennia daddy uh, how how long and i'm like reading i'm like <laughs> Oh, three days. Oh, three three days? And like, yeah, three days. And then we another have to do three another days. three days. And then another three days. So he's like so confused. He's like, <laughs> thanks, thanks, Dad, for this gift. We put it all together and then just leave it. All. Now we got to leave it for another two weeks. That's hilarious. Before. Yeah, so Dude. I feel, feel hella bad. But I tell you what, man, he's- uh, That's he's, a good skill. Yeah, he's chill, man. He's yeah. like totally like, That's okay, Dad, we'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> Dude, speaking of gifts, I got to tell you guys. That, so my parents, uh, they're in, in Sicily right now. I didn't tell you guys, right? Oh, they, I didn't know that. Yeah, they flew over to Sicily. And they're going to be there for, I think, a little over two months. And uh, they brought Ned for their family. My uh, parents were such, they love Ned so much. They wow. use the capsules. They love it so much. My dad will take a very low dose. He'll take one or two at night. And he just he feels less stiff um, from it and less inflammation. My mom started using it. She noticed her blood sugar got better from taking it. Um, so they took some over. He's been the biggest advocate in your family about it, right? My dad? Oh, yeah. I feel like my dad. My dad's, that's I think where I get it from. My dad gets excited about something and then he yeah. tells everybody. Then he's like, like, he actually feels it. And yeah. he's all in. All now, in. Now, do they, is he going to have to smuggle that? Do they, do they send, do you, no, it's hemp oil extract. Yeah, but does, does Ned even ship overseas? Uh-uh. They're only I don't, US. I don't think so. Maybe Doug could look it up. I think it's just in the US. Yeah, there's some countries you can't take it in. For Hemp example, oil? Dubai. Yeah, I Middle think, East. Middle East. Oh, yeah, yeah you well, go to jail for life. That's or really whatever. restrictive yeah. in yeah. general. Yeah. Wasn't somebody executed in one of those countries? There was somebody that, an American, that, or they got went to jail for life. They went to they jail. Got, they got okay. tested. They didn't even have it on them. They had THC in their system. Mm. Yeah. If you get tested and they find THC in your blood, it's yeah. considered carrying. Yeah. Well, we're not going there. Yeah, I can't go there. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's, it's in my hair. I mean, that yeah, it takes like a month to get that out of your system too. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can't do that. I know. But yeah. anyway, so they're over there sharing it. And I'm, I'll get some I want to go to Dubai though. That's on my list. Do you guys like to go there? Is that like an area I that you- I would use? love to go there. Yeah, yeah. I would but love to check it out too. I would love to go there. I heard it's gorgeous. It's like gold seal. Yeah. I heard it's gorgeous. I heard they have incredible shopping malls, gyms. It's supposed to be really good over there. If there's a great fitness scene over there, I just want to see all the cars. Do you think it's like that? Oh yeah, we're just they're just driving. Around oh yeah, like, no, I've talked to people that have been over really. There. Yeah, they say it's like that. Huh. Yeah, yeah. I was even talking to my like, there's like, <clears throat> like with exotic cars and stuff like that. There's like crazy companies like Mansory and like that do these over the top kits and like they're known as like. 
people call them like Dubai kits because it's like, that's where you see that. Like here, you would never see that. It's just, so you buy a, a half a million dollar car, like who's going to go spend it? You another, leave it. Yeah, you leave it alone. It's already amazing. Like who goes and spends $200,000 through an what? outside company? What are they doing? To, they modify it. Just completely modify it. They what are you going to add to a half a million I'll show car? you guys. I, I mean, I don't, even think, I don't even like the way it looks. It mm. looks, it, you take a beautiful car, like a Ferrari or a Lamborghini and you just, like change it. It looks like a different car. It's like, why would you do that? I think really? so beautiful. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you guys. Like, well, Doug, pull up Mansory, M-A-N-S-O-R-Y uh, body kits. And do they can, make them look all like uh, comic book style? Yes. Yeah, oh. you'll, you'll see. I think I've like, seen stuff They're like, like over the top. Like it doesn't, like you wouldn't, I mean, especially if you don't know the the models and stuff like that, you wouldn't even know what kind of model it is after after it. Um, yeah, have you guys ever seen the 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 change in a country like Dubai over like oh, a Oh, show one that's all done up, Doug. Oh, so that looks pretty cool. sick. No, no, no. That's no, pretty no. rad. That's just the... Doug's such a that terrible That's not modified. <laughs> I'm fucking send you some. Terrible. Doug. <laughs> would, you, would you Google it? Doug's there, a bad Doug. Googler. Yeah, he he I think if you just type it in, Doug, and Google, oh, and then go to Syria. images. Yeah, give me a... Like, just and images. click on images. That way you can see a it's bunch of... It's at the top. Go to the top, click up at the top, images. And then, there oh, you go. Okay. Now you can I see mean, that. Look at that blue car. Uh, I mean, so far uh, it's kind of cool. No, no, it's, it's much. Look at it's that, a look, lot. Yeah, look at that poor. Look at that G wagon. They're just so they're over. The, anyways, in the car world, like uh, people will refer to that like as like a Dubai kit or it's whatever. Like Overdone. Like, yeah. and, and it's a, it's like you've got so much freaking money to try to separate. Maybe because there's so many of them. Yes. Right? Yeah. Wow. You, you got so much money, and to separate it, you do this crazy over the top custom work that modifies uh, the car. Have like you guys that. seen huh. like uh, those pictures of Dubai like 50 years ago versus now or something like that? Have you seen those? Mm -mm. It's crazy. Like how I much imagine. Like they built crazy. It's crazy. It's really the power of like you know capitalism, money, cool. markets, because it just weren't they the ones that created their own island? Yep. Yeah, with yeah the Palm yep. Island yep. thing yep. with all the buildings. Is that even and... still? Oh, here you go. What is that right yeah, there? No, that's all. That's all man made. Look at look, is that that's before and after right there. Look at that picture. Yeah, just the amount of money it takes. And, and when is that before taken? Does it show the year then and now? Uh, let me see. It's not even that long ago. Not that long. No. It's a, it's an insane 1990 to oh, okay. 2019. Look at that! Yeah. Wow, that's like that's, that's wild. Insane. Well, how far how far from there are they building that 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 famous the the longest uh, the long oh, that's in out. Saudi Arabia? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought that yeah, they that's... hold on. I thought that they had to scrap that. Oh, I think they had to reduce its they had length to or something. A, they fact, had to do something it. different. Too. I read an article that said it was a huge um, like disgrace to the royal family because they had to there was they had these huge plans and they had to dramatically reduce. The size of it because really yeah because huh. of cost i and, didn't know that i watched uh -huh. the whole thing on that it's still going on I how mean, far are they from me apart or apart from each other they broke ground I mean, you know, for, for i mean sure, they're probably right? very close yeah that's what i thought so is it like for, yeah i don't know well they, i wanted to bring this up Jeez. it was uh for adam because um like adidas it. was doing like some some interesting like promotional idea and it's always interesting to see like how you get people's attention these days uh, with like Commercials wild shoes. And and, like how much more wild can you get with uh, shoes? Uh, because I mean, I've seen some crazy ones, but Adidas, they made these literally. So the, the box you get your shoes in. Yeah. They just styled and, and made it into a shoe. <laughs> Wait, it's like, a shoe box? It's like Inception, let me, dude. Let me see this. Yeah. Let me see this. Yeah, they're, they're literally box, like shoe boxes, and, then, and, and they cu cut it out and like have the tongue and everything in there. And, and so you're walking around with these stupid boxes. Doug, look up Adidas box shoes. Is this like... I have not seen this. That's weird. I, I want to see a this. picture of it. If you don't While mind. he's looking that up, have you seen the the prototypes for uh, uh, Wimby's shoes? Have What's you seen that? his? Uh uh What's a Wimby? Uh, so he's no, he's a new he's a rookie. This that's year. not a box shoe. No, that's it not looks a, like a nice shoe. No box like put promo maybe promotional box or a, oh those are boxing shoes. Maybe Adidas no, no, no. shoe box shoes. Shoe box shoes. Yeah. yeah. Is that a real thing or was it like a joke? It, no, it's like a promotional. So it's like to get attention for something, right? So that's like, I, that's like half the, I think like it's so hard these days to. Uh, yes. The, yeah. Shut up. Yeah. The box. It, it actually shows somebody <laughs> with them on. The though. only reason why Dude, I believe this could be that. true is remember when those stupid, those uh, big, like uh, Kanye was wearing the, and, uh, and the, uh, the, Antonio oh, Brown was wearing the them. The big red boot. Yes. One yes. Things? Yeah. Like that's, a, those were a real thing. Those didn't, those didn't take a, oh my gosh, shut up. <laughs> I on. just thought like- Are we being this, trolled? Are we Kyle, like- Kyle, you, can you do Are know? we at that level now where it's you're young like enough, the you're stupidest to know this stuff. idea we can have? April Fool's. No, is it really? 
Yeah, according to this, yeah. Uh, oh, come on. Uh, God damn it, Justin. Justin gets fooled. Why? I'm, I'm three for three. Uh, <laughs> you, know what, I'm, you know what I'm not bringing up anymore? Uh, any news? About of, famous people? Yeah, famous people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, still do it, bro. Still good Okay, time. fine. Look up. Uh, I'll give me this, be, Doug. No, misinformation um, hour. Wimby, W-E-M-B-Y. Wimby prototype uh, sneaker. What's Wimby? It's a person. Wimbyana is his last name. Who is that? Yeah, it's a new rookie uh, basketball. Okay. It's like a... Yeah, uh, there's guys seven foot five, whoa, <laughs> and plays like a guard, shooting threes like. Is Steph he the Kirk. tallest person in the NBA? Yes. Oh. And God. has handles and can shoot. He set like all kinds of records this year, his rookie year. Look at that. Those oh, things. Like, weird. It, and so there, his logo is like the alien design, and so these are his his shoes are going to look like this. Huh. Look at those. That was wild. Looks those like he's made wild. out of whipped cream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. That's weird. Dude. He's wild to watch play, dude. It's a it's a trip. Could you imagine seeing what a seven foot five person would look like in person? I, I mean, mean, if you've never seven five, I don't know. Seen that's, I've been I've, I've seen, seen a seven seen, foot I have guy, too. which uh I've oh, no, the guy actually wasn't seven foot. He was going 6'10". to a basketball game and seeing what I think what's Bill Cart, right? crazier right? to me yeah. is when you see the point guards like Steph Curry, who you assume are short because they're short in comparison, comparison to the seven yeah, five, yeah. five guy and he's the little point guard. And he's bigger than you right. is a trip. Yeah, there's like, still like six eight. Or yeah, like yeah. Six, well, he's nine, not that yeah. tall, but either right. he's over. You know, he's six three. You know, what I'm saying yeah. as a as a point guard, and so he's not like this tiny wow. little short guy. But he looks like it because he's playing with guys that are seven five. And so when you're, and, and where else in the world would you ever see that many people over six five in the in the same room? Like you could go, you could go ten years of your life and never see a seven foot person. No. Yeah. And never see a step, but yeah, was the, Muggsy see, Bugs the shortest? Yeah, but he was under six foot. He's five three. No, yes, sir. Was there somebody Look shorter? Muggsy Bugs? No, he was not five three. Yes, sir. Five three. He could dunk too. It was no way. Yeah, he five could three. Dunk. He dunked at five six. Three? Five three. I'm pretty sure he's five three. Look no, at yeah, five way. three. Thank you. Wow, what? Yeah. five three. What? Yeah. So how would he? So he no, just no, run between could, everybody's legs. He could dunk, dude. It was a trip to watch. Yeah. Wait a minute. Spud Webb was down that low, too. He, he was pretty short. Yeah, he was a little taller, I think, but yeah. not much. Talk about your whole life. <laughs> I'm going to play in the NBA. No, you're not. Sorry, buddy. You're super <laughs> small, yeah. bro. You're not even close to tall enough. And yeah. then you do. I know. Wow. Yeah, and imagine putting him next to someone like Wimby, who's like 7'5". But then again, it would be hard. Like, How would he get... Like, I mean, You have to bend way the hell down just to touch the Well, kid, you're not so. stealing the ball from him, but good luck him shooting over you. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, yeah. yeah, you're trying to get the ball from him might be yeah. impossible. Yeah, you know, but, like, it's like... You know, but I mean, it's like when my it's like when my three year old imagine gets him trying to, run away to shoot from me, I can't get him. Imagine like you playing against me in basketball, and the whole time you get two broomsticks to be holding over. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. and I have to shoot over that. that so he was it. very he must have been good for like defense and uh, who's Spud Webb? Yeah, or I mean uh, uh, Muggsy. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't consider him a great uh, defender. He what was, was he? Great ball for? handler and passer. Real great. Yeah. yeah. So he just point made plays happen. He's a true point guard. Yeah. You're just wow, mm -hmm. that's insane. But the fact that he could dunk is crazy. Yeah. Five three is, 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 is that's insane. He must have been like I'm pretty sure that he won the dunk contest one year because of that. Just because he like him being able to do like just a reverse dunk, dunk is, is like an insane feat. That's is. crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Start, speaking of crazy, uh, I cannot wait for our Vegas um, get together with all of our fans. I know. Yeah. So when's the last time we did Ohio? It, it's been a long time before COVID. So right we haven't COVID. done, we haven't done since 2020. Was it 2020 that we did it or was it 2020? Yeah, 2020. Mm -hmm. Right before COVID hit, mm -hmm. we did a live event with fans. Yeah. So it's been four years. Yeah. Then this one's in not, and this one's in Vegas. Yeah. So this is going to be a good time. Yeah. No, so, and how many people are we allowing to go? 200. Okay. Yeah. We had to cut it off at 200 fire marshal stuff. Uh, I have a feeling this one will go fast because this is, this is the first time. the Bellagio. Yeah, Bellagio. So Vegas, Bellagio, live with us, hang out, meet us. And then are we doing the, the where we're doing some VIP where people can also- Yeah, there's going to be six VIP. Choose we'll do dinner. to like we're gonna do hang a nice, out with us. Yeah, we're okay. going to do a fancy steak dinner with six people. Then there'll be, uh, and then there'll be general admission, right? So it'll be general admission. Uh, and then I think that we even have a deal for like if couples come for, if you buy two tickets or whatever like that. Um, and then uh, and then we're going to be there all day with general admission people. And then we'll hang out, VIP stuff. Uh, and VIP, I think I think they, Katrina and the team are putting together like a gift bag. You get front row seats. You oh, and then so you get dinner with us. Um, it's been a long time. Those normally sell out right away, though. So I'll just tell you right now, if you're listening and you want to do the dinner with us, because there's only six, that always goes. That'll for, be gone in like yeah, 15 that, minutes. Yeah, that'll go as soon as this goes live. It'll go. That'll go the first. All right, part. where do they go then? Where's what's the website? 
Mindpumplive.com. Mind Is it set up? Time. Yeah. Can yeah. you pull it up? I haven't even seen what it looks like. Is there a picture <laughs> yeah. of us? What are, we, what are we doing here? Are we in Vegas? <laughs> Is this like, a, hey, what did someone do with a hangover picture? That would have been a great picture. Oh, yeah. We did those, those photos Actually, and everything. we did do that. Come on, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. do everything around here. Yeah, Fuck. and you had the little baby carrier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that would have been hilarious for a Vegas, for a, for a Vegas yeah. thing that we're doing. That would have been perfect. Come on. No, you know, it's, just the right it's, right just a nice, it's just a nice picture of us looking like we like each other. <laughs> Real rare moment. Look at, get, look at Justin and with sunglasses at the front answering questions. What a douchebag! That was a <laughs> dude. It's outside. I mean, it's, no. if I'd be an oh, asshole, we did if it was that. inside. When that was, was that event? The one, the that one right there, Doug. That was uh, for trainers only, right? This one, that one right there. No, mm. Sal, you know that I might did have been that. the time Max Lugavier was here. Yeah, yeah. and, and so. then. And, December 22. 22nd. So that was so that oh, was we, more recent. But that was just for trainers and only like 50 people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was I only trainers. So. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. can't remember. Okay. You don't Look, remember. I had all the answers taped to my inside of my glasses. That's not why. <laughs> <laughs> I need that shit. Yes. I'm not like a robot like you. <laughs> I love I love I love the, the live events. I really do. I, I enjoy uh the I, listen, I I've said it a million times, I'll say it again. Like I, we love what we do, but the one thing that we're lacking with this is what we used to get in the gyms is you actually get to meet the people yeah. that you're impacting and helping. Yep. And we don't get to meet lots. Of, in fact, today we have few, few people listening to the show live and we enjoy that because we get to meet people. Otherwise it's like, who are we impacting? Who are we we're helping? Just disconnected. What's it the, doesn't feed you the same. You what's know? the most, like what's the funniest or most common question you get asked when we get when we do live stuff like is there something that like you just either is a left field always like that's so weird that people my always... favorite is when they ask me about you guys so they'll say things like do you guys you know do you guys really get along or you know what's annoying <laughs> about justin or what about Adam? you know i like those kind of questions yeah. i make shit up and, <laughs> and, tell, and tell them all kinds of crazy shit about you guys <laughs> yeah yeah i the thing people are always surprised i always have people that uh, we just did the one in florida right where we were with people that uh how much we don't hang out outside of here. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, people assume that we work out together, that we do all these other things together. We have scheduled conversations hours long every day. What am I going to do? I'm going to talk to you guys some I more. Know. What else are we going to talk about? Yeah. 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 We're, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> We're, I'm speechless afterwards. I use it all I know. The but I think everybody, they they obviously they feel- They think we like hang out all day? Well, because of our, our, the, our I think our we bond. We could. From I it, mean, you know. We don't. We, we everybody's. It, but... And I think it's because we everyone has different things, right? We're all into kind of different stuff, even though we're- we fitness brings us together yeah right and we share it, if we didn't have this we would hang out i think also yeah. we, we get a lot of it out by doing this talking with each other quite a bit on the show sure. and also i don't know it's good it's good content when we don't see each other for a while mm -hmm. and then we sit down and we get to unload talk about what's happening you know yeah no i agree i agree with that but I, i'm excited bro i can't i can't wait to do this we haven't done a live event with listeners in so long um uh, i remember how that would make us feel we get a little bit of that when we do the nci events because we get to meet trainers mm -hmm. Uh, but this is next level. So, yeah. so the shout out today is ourselves. Is ourselves. My pup live. Come see us. Shout us out. Come see us. We're pretty cool. Sign up. Come hang up. Yep. Hang out. In person. If you've suffered from headaches, muscle cramps, fatigue, uh, sleeplessness, um, you may actually have an electrolyte deficiency. There's a company called LMNT that makes an electrolyte powder. There's no artificial sweeteners, no sugar, and it has the right amount of sodium. Most electrolyte powders don't have enough sodium, believe it or not. So if you eat a healthy diet... You work out, you probably should supplement with electrolytes. LMNT is the company that we prefer the most. Go check them out. Get yourself a free sample pack with any order. Go to drinklmnt.com forward slash mind pump. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Danny from Australia. Danny, what's going on, man? What up, Danny? What's up, man? Hey, guys. How are you? Good how you doing? Great. We're doing, we're doing all right. Adam's having a some little something, something there in the corner. That, yeah, oh, just, yeah. Uh, I give them supplements to try or experiment, you know, yeah. whatever you want to call it. So we'll see how we end 15 um, minutes from now. I just want to say, first and foremost, you guys are probably sick of hearing it by now, but just want to say a huge thank you to everything you guys do for the fitness community. Uh, myself as an up and coming personal trainer, um, really helps me with my clients to teach them the right way to do things and yeah, it helps me put the, the right information out there. So thank you guys heaps for that. Hell thank yeah, you, man. man. You're our favorite people. We love trainers. How can we help you? Um, so my question revolves around bodybuilding. Um, I'm currently seven weeks out from my first show um, oh. and pretty much I'm 500 calories. Uh, maintenance is roughly about 3,800 calories. Um, and my question is regarding basically post-show. 
So I've hired myself a coach being my first show, not being aware of what to expect and how to get myself in the shape required to be on stage. So um, my question is just after the show, what should my calories look like and what should my training intensity slash volume look like uh, going you know, back into normal everyday life and to try and mitigate fat gain and uh, obviously keep, I don't know whether it, I'm, my intensity needs to be reduced because of my calories is going to be reduced. So I just kind of am a bit lost as to what to do after the, after the fact. A, a generic answer would be to almost mirror what you did going in. So like, you know, for example, if you are, you're seven weeks out mm. and you cut another 500 calories and add an hour of cardio a week, and then the next week you cut another 500 calories, add another cardi hour of cardio a week, and you just keep doing something like that, or I don't know what your plan is or what your coach has you doing. But then when you come out, you reverse- you scale it back. You scale it back almost the same way you scaled coming into it. That's kind of a generic answer. Now, you can get away- with uh you know the first two days of after being so low for so long you're you're gonna find like my, my favorite time actually is the the week after competing because you've been deprived for so long and you could tell you're, you're gonna have the best workout of your life uh you know about two three days after after the show because your body's just been starving of nutrients it's probably wanted to back off of all the cardio that you might be doing or going to be doing and so it's going to respond really, really well. The mistake people make is they come all the way down. Let's say by the time you hit peak week, you get down to 2,500 or 2,200 calories. Let's say you get that low. And then you jump all the way back up to 35 or 37 every day. <clears throat> now, you could afford to easily jump back up to 35 or 37 for the first two days because you're going to be needing to refuel, refeed, fill your glycogen levels all back up. And so you could afford to do two big days right after you've been depleted. But then I would go right back to like a, you know, somewhere in the middle calorie. So if you got all the way down to 22 and you know that your, your maintenance is somewhere around 35 or 37, I'll probably put you at like 2,700 calories. So, so I have an interesting yep. speculation on this, Adam, and, and you're the only, uh, I mean, you're, you're IFBB pro. So you're obviously the person to ask here when people come out of intense in season training for other sports, basketball, football, water polo, whatever. Typically the protocol sounds very different than what we would tell an in-season bodybuilder post-show. In other words, an athlete, if they go into hard season, they train their ass off and like, okay, what do I do afterwards? Typically the advice is take a week or two off completely. Don't exercise, bump your calories up, nourish your body, and then ease back into training. But what we tell, tend to tell bodybuilders is to maintain the intensity and then scale down slowly and keep the calories high and scale down slowly. And I'm assuming, and I'd love to hear your input on this because I know you've experimented with all kinds of different <coughs> methods. I'm assuming the reason for this has less to do with what's better for the body and more to do with we don't want to gain a lot of body fat. Am I, is that correct? Yeah, this is not, this is not what's optimal for health. health. Or, yeah, okay. this is like, how do I mitigate body fappers. I mean, there's some, there's some level of health there, right? Because you don't want to binge afterwards, which sure. is, the, is the number one mistake. Sure. And that, that's unhealthy, right? To, right? to do that. But yeah, it's, it's more in, in, in lines of, oh, this is how I reduce the least amount of excess body fat I'm going to put on. <laughs> some is healthy and good. We want yeah. that. That's why a couple of days of a, a good high refeed, you could easily get away with two, three days of really high calorie and right afterwards nothing. and then yeah, and do little literally so the other part of it i'm assuming has to do with the psychological piece because coming out of a contest like you said the binge aspect the the incident of or the instances where bodybuilders or physique competitors just go so far in the opposite direction so high that really what you're managing a lot of is a psychological component a hundred percent and okay. danny the thing with this is like at least in my experience not only personally going through this but coaching people through this people can get really in the weeds, especially coaches that are charging you to, to pay them to make, make this overly complicated than it needs to be. Like the big thing is do not go over overboard. And that is the, the number one mistake that most people, they go, they, in fact, you, and I'm sure you're aware of this cause you're in, you're in the space right now. Like, you know, everybody right now heading into the show is already planning 
their post workout. They've there are I've seen post show I mean, yeah, yeah weeks weeks before their show they're already buying the Oreo bags. They're already talking about they're gonna God. eat. The, I mean and that, that used to be yeah, a thing. I don't know, I don't know if it's still a thing, but that was always a thing in my when I was competing like. Everybody was already purchasing the junk that they were going to consume that they had been restricting from. That is a terrible way to do this and a terrible relationship uh, with this, you know, competing and then dieting. And so long as you do not go from that, because here's what happens is let's say you went for like 8,000 calories, which is, sounds like a lot, but you'd be surprised how easily you could eat that when you've been deprived that long. The next day mm -hmm. after 8,000 calories, you're going to look and feel awesome. And then if you do that again, yeah. 8,000 calories, you're still going to look pretty fucking awesome and feel pretty good. And so, psycho you yourself. so psychologically, you start to mind fuck yourself and go like, man, I, I really need all these. And, uh, and uh, man, this is great. I'm going to eat whatever I want. And then you stay on that path. And then you look back after three weeks and you've put 20 pounds on and 15 of its you, body fat. Adam, do you think that would this be a, a viable approach considering the psychological aspect of it? Like if somebody post show, because I'm thinking physiologically, right? If you told them, take a week off of exercise, uh, slowly ramp your calories up, ease back into your workout um, at that point versus keeping it where it was. And then, you know, instead of this kind of pyramid that looks like high and then bring it down, rather start low, start to bring it back up. Or do you think that that's going to feed too much into the opposite? Yeah, there's a there's a lot of different ways that I've personally played with this. Like, what, I, what, what, How did you feel best? I actually liked, literally all I would do is pretend that the diet hasn't stopped. Okay. So the show is over. I would just treat the day of the, sh the, day of the show, the day after is like a big refeed. So I, I would, I'd, I'd eat big. Okay. I'd eat okay. big for those two days. Okay. But then I would pretend like I'm still on a diet. And it should, but I have a lot more freedom now. It's like the diet's no longer 2,200 calories. The diet's 2,700 so calories. So same food, just more. Yeah. And, you know, I don't have to now, now I don't have to do the hour of cardio that I was having to do in that last week heading into it. So I've cut out the cardio. I've, I've increased my calories, but I still pretend like I'm still following a plan until I get myself ramped up to this like sustainable calorie intake where I can maintain a body single digit body fat percentage, be feeding myself good and doing no cardio whatsoever. And that's kind of the desired outcome. Okay. So that, and, and, and that's what's worked for me. And what I've seen fail the most is just the, it really is the going to extreme. There's a lot of different like ways. No to skin plan this. going from a plan yeah, to no plan. Yes. There's a ton of ways you can skin this cat. And again, coaches will overcomplicate this and try and sound smarter than they are of like, Oh, you need yeah. to do it this way. And it's like, no, it's not that complicated. And so like with the training, um, obviously I'm doing five days a week at the moment. And then like you said, drop the cardio off um, and 12,500 steps. And so when I reverse out of this, should I reduce those five days down to like three or four? Like, because I was looking at like a map split sort of deal. Or is that too much volume? Oh, or Only Dan, only if that was, is considered a lot of training for you. Right. So like if you, yeah, no. if like, even if you weren't competing, would you still train five days a week? And if you would, then I'd say keep you know, I've been training five days a week pretty much yeah. for the last few years that I've been prepping. So yeah. So so there's there it's not maybe necess maybe come back with kind of a lower intensity as your body recovers. Yeah. You just yeah, I mean, and really I don't know what your your coach has you doing right now, but when when once I got into uh prep mode, I'm really not pushing the intensity. You're not building any muscle right now. So there's yeah. no reason to be like you know, crazy training sets. That, this is a, a, also, by the way, I think this is a mistake that a lot of competitors make it still training to failure like crazy and, and trying to push people. It's like, dude, you're, you are depleted. You're not feeding your body what's necessary. Overstressing it is not going to keep any more mm -hmm. muscle. If anything, it's going to sacrifice more. So right now you should be doing, you know, I mean, you should still be training hard because you're probably consistent and strong, but you're not trying to break records. You're not trying to increase volume right now, just maintaining so when you come and then and then when you get fed a bunch of calories right after your show, you're gonna feel amazing because mm -hmm. and so you don't really need to modify the the weight training part per se, or you shouldn't have to if you've been coached into it right and you've been training properly going in. Uh, the only thing that's really gonna get modified is I re reduce or get rid of cardio, and I and I bump calories and and, and depending on how far down you went, you know I'm, I'm probably gonna bump it back up. I'm gonna give myself the two refeed days and I'm probably gonna bump myself. 500 calories and I'm going to see what happens in that week and how my body responds. And then I'm slowly probably bumping 500 mm -hmm. calories a week all the way until I get back to what I would consider my like good maintenance or where I want to maintain my calories. That's pretty much what it looks like. As far as the, the strength training, you know, you, you could keep it the same. Now, 
you will benefit from switching your programming up because now you're you're re refeeding your body a surplus. So giving it a new adaptation. So let's say your protocol kind of looks like a MAPS aesthetic program and then you get out of the sh or get done with your show and then you transition to like a MAPS strong or an old timey with a calorie surplus. That'd be super beneficial because yeah. now you have a new adaptation. You're refeeding the body. And so you're going to see some growth and change. Maps so, anabolic would even be good. Yeah, or anabolic or anabolic advanced because he's a he's an experienced lifter. Mm -hmm. Like either one of those would be great. Yeah, no, awesome. I've got both those programs, so oh. I can easily Perfect. transition into one of those. Afterwards. Yeah, so uh, it's awesome. Are Thanks you, so much. Are, Danny, um, are you in our Are you in our forum already? No, I'm not. I'm not a part of the forum at the I'll, moment. I'll have Doug put you in our forum. And then uh, as you're oh. going through the process, I know you have a coach, but feel free to share your experience and your process. And if you just yeah. want to double check things with me, tag me and, and let me know what's going on. Oh, awesome, man. Appreciate it. And um, just add one more member to the sitting down to P tribe. So. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. You're from Australia. You guys, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the day, you guys were too ashamed. Sure. You would hide in the shadows. All of a sudden, all this courage. <laughs> That's my, Watch out uh, spiders. So That's my guy. That's my guy. All right, brother. I'll see you inside the forum. Oh, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. You got it. You know, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if I feel like I gave him a good answer, but I think you did. Yeah. You know, it, it's interesting. Cause first off, the the psychological piece you have to consider first and foremost mm -hmm. when you're talking about anybody, but especially someone coming out of a post show, you know, or a, a, a pre contest diet, right? But be, beside that, it was interesting as you were talking. I thought, you know. When we talk about an in-season athlete who's also training to the max, probably overtrained, you know, injury prone, they get out of season, the advice is typically different. It's like take some time off. Whereas these guys, we say, no, train the same, slowly scale it down over time. But it really has to do more with the aesthetic and the psychological piece where it's like, I'm worried about getting too much body fat. And then they, they tend to swing in the opposite direction. It also matters too, so And what I don't know, because I'm not his coach, is – because this is a massive mistake in this in this space is these guys depleted to all shit doing cardio like crazy and then they're training intense as fuck yeah it's yeah, like yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's because it, like all the videos that we've seen and all the hype that's around yeah, it be, but it's like you're not doing yourself i always say the real work for winning having a, a first place physique on stage was done before prep yeah that was the building and the sculpting of muscles. You came in the show before, your shoulders weren't round enough. Off season, I'm um, loaded on calories, I'm building those delts. Come prep time, I'm not building my delts anymore. I'm carving away the body fat and I'm revealing all the hard work I did. And you can absolutely overdo the training because you're in a caloric deficit and you're Everybody doing, does and, doing too. Cardio. and most of these knuckleheads do that. Yeah. And really, he should be kind of cruising in with his training. He's now just he's just touching all his muscles. I mean, staying strong, the guy's probably strong. So I'm not saying like reduce your intensity to 50%, but you don't need to be You're prep. just trying to keep yeah, yeah, you're not trying to make leaps right now. You're yeah. in a calorie deficit and you're doing cardio. That would be you're just you may as well do another hour of cardio every day then too and really right. sacrifice more muscle. You're you're not you're you're not getting enough nutrients to build in this at this place. So if that's true and you're doing that right, when you come out, you're not training hella intense. Yeah. In fact, you might actually get to ramp up your so my best workouts were the two, three days after training because I'm fed now. You get all that. Now I'm hitting now. PRs. Yeah. Now I'm hitting my best lifts, my best pumps. Like I feel like I could train for an extra hour. I mean, I feel amazing. So, and that to me, that's what should be happening here. But uh, unfortunately it's hard because so many of these coaches they go to the calorie burn thing and they increase intensity in yeah. the strength yeah. training. They increase the amount of cardio they're doing. They decrease the amount of calories. And then, yeah, then these people, these people's metabolisms are all out of whack when they get out of the show. Yeah. But it, it's not that it's not that overcomplicated if you go into it correctly. And then, you, like I say, you don't eat like an asshole afterwards. You don't go overboard with the overeating for weeks. You know, a couple of days ain't going to hurt you. But five, yeah. six, seven days of binging. Absolutely. Or months. Yeah, or months, yeah. which is what happens. Our next caller is Kelly from North Carolina. Hi, Kelly. How can we help you? How are you doing, Kelly? Hello. hello. Hi. How are you? We're doing all right. Good. Well, thank you so much for having me on. This is just an honor to be here and for you guys to take my question. And um, so, Sal, don't let them pick on you about your supplements because I have an array of supplements too. And I even have a supplement purse, but it's not a supplement purse. It's Does a it healthy like habit. 
Oh, that's cute. Uh, we'll call it yeah. a healthy habits yeah, purse. You can call it what you want. It's dysfunctional. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in denial of it. <laughs> a healthy habits purse. I like that. No, no, yeah. thank I'm you. Right there. We'll buy you one. <laughs> so um, I'll go ahead and I'll read my email and then I'll update you guys on some things. So um, I need your guys' help. I've had very little aesthetic improvement in my glutes over the past year, and I was curious what I should be doing differently. Some background, I'm 43 years old. I'm five foot one and about 115 to 120 pounds. I'm a group fitness instructor. I'm sorry, Adam, but I also teach yoga and I'm a personal trainer. I used to be a hardcore cardio boot camp class junkie, but I wasn't seeing improvements and I was only getting injuries. I quit doing those classes and I started lifting about two years ago. I mostly started with machines like Smith machine and accessory exercises for my legs and glutes. And I saw some improvements. I had the newbie gain, so I saw some improvements, but then I plateaued and didn't have much visual improvements. I found you guys about a year ago in April of 23 and I ended up purchasing the Mother's Day bundle, um, which included maps and aesthetic. I started MAPS Anesthetic to get ready for a family beach trip, and that's when I started first doing um, compound lifts, and I first started using a barbell. And then after I completed MAPS Aesthetics, I started MAPS Symmetry, and I really enjoyed the unilateral workouts. I'm currently following MAPS Anabolic in pre-phase. Strength-wise, I've seen some good improvements from doing the MAPS programs. I went from... 85 pounds on my um, deadlift to 185 pounds. Wow, wow. My back hey. up from 85 pounds to 150. My hip thrust went from 155 pounds to 295 pounds. Unfortunately, to look at my glutes, there doesn't seem to be much visual difference. I love my strength gains, but I wish it translated more to aesthetics. But am I being too impatient? I feel a year of continued strength should at least warrant a little more junk in my trunk. <laughs> I've included progress pictures from before I started lifting to year one and year two. My calories are at 2,000 with 120 to 150 grams of protein and whole foods. I'm consistent with tracking and I have one untracked meal with my family on Saturday nights. I'm also consistent with strength training about three times a week. I teach uh, two group fitness classes and one yoga class per week and no other cardio except walking. Um, so just an update from when I sent in my email um, <coughs> that was like three months ago. Um, I've quit doing the cardio classes. So I'm just teaching yoga just one day a week now. Um, and also right after I sent in my email, I came down with COVID really, really bad and I couldn't work out for a few weeks and I could only teach my classes. And then finally I started back into um, MAPS Anabolic and I could do like maybe one day a week, some compound lifts, but I really had to um, take away a lot of the, the weight and build myself back up. And one thing I noticed was with almost starting fresh again, um, that I was connecting more with my muscles and maybe when I increased my weight before from lifting, it might have been more just throwing weight on the bar and ego lifting. So I don't know if that might have had a little bit to do with it, but I feel like I've been putting in a lot of effort and I'm not seeing as much as I was hoping for, but that's why I want you guys guidance. Yeah. So I, I think, think you're being, you, I, I you're think doing you, way too hard yeah, on yourself. I think you're, you're looking great. You got your, 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 okay. So you went from 1500 to 2000 calories. Your strength went through the roof. Mm -hmm. And you can see it mm -hmm. in your butt too. Your butt looks different, and you and you and abs. You have more abs, and you're eating more calories. You're not. You're, you're moving in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. I think you're just. You, yeah, you need a little more patience. Harder on yourself. Yeah. Or you might not ever be satisfied with what you're looking for because you said you don't have any junk in the trunk. I see junk in the trunk there, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and your and your butt lifted and got rounder. Yeah, yeah. Um, which would reflect the strength gains. Yeah. So the advice I'd give you would be the advice I'd give anybody, which is to stay patient, yeah. continue slowly bumping up your calories to fuel the gains, continue to try to get stronger. And then if you want to add any volume, you know, if you do the, the, the maps programs and you do a spe you know, you focus on glutes, let's say you hit glutes before you hit squats, that type of stuff <clears throat> on the off yeah. days, you could do a little bit of extra volume by doing isolation glute exercises, like yeah. four or five sets on the off days, just to add a little bit extra order. volume. Yeah. But you're mm -hmm. doing great. That's incredible progress. I actually think you have a yeah. lot of glute. I think uh, if I was critiquing you like a, a bikini competitor and you were my client, I would probably put some emphasis on hamstrings. 
So we would probably hit, uh, and what that will do is it'll create the illusion of more butt. It'll work on the hamstring glute tie. Yeah, yeah. the tie-in right there. And that'll make Mm -hmm. the butt look even bubblier and fuller because the hamstrings are more shapely. And so there's room for some improvement and growth there. And so if you haven't put a lot of energy and focus on like getting really strong in the deadlift uh, and doing a lot of hamstring work. You can just add volume with leg curls uh, Mm -hmm. on the off days too because it's not really a taxing exercise. Mm -hmm. In fact- I would do things like donkey kickbacks or cable, you know, abduction, you know, on the off days just to add a little volume to the glutes. And then I would add leg curls on those off days. So you might do like a 25 minute workout on the off days, just getting a pump in the hamstrings and getting a little extra work on the glutes, bump the calories and you'll continue to see progress, but you're, you're really hard on yourself. That's really good progress. I mean, I could clearly see the difference uh, between the pictures. No, I can too. I think you, I think you look great and being able to do that while also increasing calories. And it looks like you look, it looks like you got leaner, you got leaner on top of it and built. Uh, Yeah. It's, I mean, the thing is, it's slow, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you've been lifting and training yeah. and doing stuff for a long time, we're older, like, it is a it is a slow process. But that's also the sign that you're doing it right. It sounds like you have a pretty good balance. You could probably afford to uh, bump calories more and still push push that a little bit. So you could go... I think go up 200 calories. Yeah, you could go on a bulk for a little while and and see if that'll help build and then come back down for a little while and see see what you see after that. Uh, so you could afford to do that for sure. I definitely think that the fact that you increase calories and you look leaner to me would be an indicator that I could push the calories even harder if we were trying to grow. Yeah, this isn't, this isn't just like, this is actually exceptional progress yeah. between the two pictures that I saw in that one year period. Because you were fit to begin with. It's not like you went from nothing to training. You were already fit. But to see you go from fit to f- even leaner with more muscle, more shape, 500 more calories. You're doing all the right stuff exercise wise too. Right? Very good. What you listed. So, and, and we're, we're also not taking into consideration. If I correct me if I'm wrong, you said you were doing all kinds of cardio and cl- cardio classes before, and then you right, cut, that, you cut out. that out. Yeah. So you've cut out a bunch of, a- of, you know, calorie burning activity, bumped ca- calories, bumped calories, got stronger, and you got stronger, yeah. look leaner. Uh-huh. I mean, that, that's a massive win when you consider that. Cause you got to factor in that too, that you, are no longer doing all the repetitive yeah. burning. So that's awesome. Okay. Thank you guys. I guess maybe I have some friends that are coaches and, you know, it's honestly, it's hard to coach yourself. And I look at them and I look progressively and I'm like, wow, I'm not really seeing much. And I show some friends and they're like, oh, I don't know. I'm not seeing as much too. And then I'm thinking, am I putting in all this work and getting nothing out of it? No. Um, but one thing I well, thank you guys. And I didn't want to sacrifice um, from listening to you guys. I've really prioritized sleep, um, yeah. just getting in good food. And um, I feel like I feel better now from cutting out years ago with all those cardio classes. I never realized how spent I was all the time. Yeah. Now being able to like have more energy and I love feeling strong. Um, I just wasn't sure. And, and it makes sense that I've probably been just a little too hard on myself, a little too impatient. Um, but you guys are reassuring me that I'm moving in the right direction and I can keep doing that. And um, I also want to thank you guys because being a, uh, a coach and trainer myself, I've been able to help people and see their best potential. And um, part of the reason why I stopped um, teaching classes was because of being in your guys' program too. The, the mind pub coaching program I've added on more clients and so mm-hmm. I've been able to cut the classes add on clients and it's just yeah. been such a so I knew I could reach out to you guys because I trust your advice and I knew that whatever you guys would share with me would be the direction that I need to go um so as far as like if I like you said Adam and if I focus more on the hamstring stuff um so you guys were saying do like a separate day is that kind of like a trigger day or would that be more than a trigger like a focus like session, focus session yeah. i mean she's got all the programs so we could run i would run like maps aesthetic and then make hamstring uh, hamstrings glute. hamstrings yeah, includes your, your focus days yeah okay yep yeah I can so do that. kelly i'm gonna give you so he, okay so now now i'm gonna give you the advice i think that'll really help you because i don't think building more butt and hamstrings is gonna fix this I, you're going to if you listen to our advice and you're already doing that but I'm going to tell you now, because you're a trainer, you work in the fitness industry, and I'm going to guess that you're a better trainer to your clients than you are to yourself. Is would that? Am I correct? Okay. 100%. If you really want to work on this, what I want you to do is to stop taking pictures of yourself, stop examining yourself in the mirror, 
and criticizing or being critical of your body. Stop weighing yourself. Stop taking your body fat. And just for a couple months, just focus on how you feel and treat yourself like a client. And that's going to have to be a conscious thing. So in other words, when these negative conversations pop up or this these inward thoughts of or criticisms, I want you to stop yourself and act like the trainer that you are to your clients because you're going to have to beat this. And this, by the way, this is very common with people in our space. This is this is the the trainer curse or the fitness uh, professional curse. Is we're so hard on ourselves and we're so much better with our clients. If you could flip that on yourself, then you'll achieve a whole new level of happiness with your fitness. If you don't, this is going to be a struggle for a long time. Okay. Yeah, that makes so much sense. And and I can flip that switch. I can do that. And I probably just needed to hear that from you guys. Um, and you know, that kind of changes my perspective on things a lot and you hit the nail on the head and I never, I didn't know that was what I was going to be going into, but I guess I should have known that you guys would be able to do that for me. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, well, keep us posted, Kelly. Yeah, I, I'd love to hear back from you in a couple months and, and hear how, how things are going. I'm really you. happy that our, our coaching course has helped you build your business. That was the whole point of the whole, the whole thing. So yeah. that's amazing to hear. It's been incredible. And I will say the level of confidence that I have is through the roof. Like I, I felt confident before, but not just like listening to the podcast and what you guys share, but having this program where you guys lay out so much and then also having the camaraderie of the other trainers and the Facebook group has been, it's been priceless. So thank awesome. you guys so much. Awesome. Thank you for the feedback. Yes. Kelly. Thank, thank you, Kelly. Fantastic. All right, guys, take care. Bye-bye. All right. It's so tough, you know, and I, I can relate to her because I, I'm, I'm the same way. And, you know, it's like you, I, I know so many trainers. I was the same way. They're so good with their clients. Their clients come to them with the same criticism. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God, my body. I feel like I'm not changing. And then the, and then the trainer's like, no, no, what are you talking about? Like you gained 100 pounds on your deadlift. Look at these pictures. Your butt is here versus over here. You look so much it's better. A massive blind spot. And then for yourself, yourself yeah. you're just just shuts a, you know, you can be such an asshole to yourself. And you won't get out of it with by changing your body. You'll be chasing a, a moving goalpost for the rest of your My life. My favorite part of this conversation is listening to the descriptors when we were talking about the butt, <laughs> <laughs> bubbly, shapely. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, I love and, it. it's my and favorite. And it's it's you know to see it in other people, it's, yeah. it's very revealing because it's like I have no junk in the trunk. Uh, you know, I think yeah, we're gonna junk post in the trunk. Isn't yeah, it? like like those pictures don't say that at all. Well, yeah. the part that I want to highlight because this is a common mistake made by not just trainers but clients too is you have to factor in the all the other changes in behaviors that totally. you've been able to do yep. and if let's just say and i don't think she gave us an exact number but let's just say she was doing an extra three classes a week which i'm sure she was probably teaching or doing which is three hours of cardio a week or more probably and eating less calories mm -hmm. and like so she looks better she looks leaner Stainly, she looks yeah. like she's built built her butt she's added 500 calories she's reduced three hours or more it's of like cardio. The, it's like everything you would want yeah no yeah. it's it, it we're you're killing it but you don't think about all those things all you see is the incremental yeah. change on the, the, the growth picture. you're yeah. hyper focused focus on this yeah. one thing therefore yes. ignoring all this incredible yeah progress. all these other things and it's like wow actually when i think about it i i've gained three hours or more of my life back i have way more energy and i'm sleeping better I'm like strong, my muscles I'm stronger up. I than I've up. ever been, and I my butt is better. I just can't see it as well as other people who are on the outside looking in. Our next caller is Simon from Canada. What's up, Simon? Hey, hey. what up, man? How's the lumberjack business? <laughs> it's too good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going okay. All right, <laughs> mine's going well too. Uh, I think that's a, I think that's the first time I got that one. I'll give yeah, credit yeah. to y'all for that one. <laughs> <laughs> How can we help you, man? Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So here, let me just read what I got here. So I'm just kind of going to go with the script. So I've been recently getting into strongman competitions uh, happening in uh, Manitoba, Canada. Uh, so just kind of giving some background there. Uh, I'm 23 years old, six feet, uh, 245 pounds. I've been uh, using MAP Strong to help me with training, gain more strength. But before that, I finished MAP's old time. Absolutely loved it. Uh, with MAP's old time, I saw a huge increase in shoulder strength. My log press increased from 180 I went on 80 pounds to 215 pounds. Wow. Yeah, yeah, son. Uh, so it was crazy. And then I've been following map strong to a T and I've been noticing some improvements, but it is way too much volume for me. And I had taken, uh, just taken it down a notch because I've been too tired. and feel like I'm just overdoing it. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. For uh, up on that. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, yeah, I've been taking, I've also been talking to, actually, you guys mentioned it before, uh, Christopher, I'm going to screw up his last name, Masneret. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've been talking to him uh, about kind of, because uh, he combined Map Strong and Old Time for his training, had a major improvements from that, and trying to see if I can do the same thing. Uh, I love Maps Old Time because of how well it worked for me, and it's increased strength, but I also love Map Strong because of how much the exercises relate to the strongman sport. Uh, I guess the first question is how much does maps old time correlate with strongman with the strongman sport? Would maps old time help me succeed in the strongman sport? If I were to just also stick to maps old time. Great Gosh, question. I would love yeah. to see this tested out. I know. Well, you know, <laughs> so if, if you really look at strongman competitions and if you were to compare them to any other era in, in, in strength sports or bodybuilding or whatever, it would definitely look like old time, like most. old time yeah. competitions. They've just like, add a lot more movement to it now. Back in the day, that's what that's what bodybuilding was. Like you get on stage and you would see who could lift the most overhead, or who could pick up the, the heaviest barrel, who could run across the stage, or whatever. So, so it's very similar. I and, and the reason why old time had so much carryover is you build a l incredible back strength, grip strength, overhead pressing strength, and you need a lot of that in in strongman training. Now, strongman training is more specific to strongman competition. So what I would say is follow each program as they're laid out, but you did the right thing by noticing that strong because Map Strong does have a lot of volume. Those work sessions oh, yeah. are crazy comes out of the gates, when yeah. it comes out when it comes to volume. So I would reduce the volume in strong and follow it as it's laid out. And I'd start with about a third of the volume cut out, is what I would do. Um, and primarily probably in those work sessions because that's where it gets really gnarly. But I love the idea of alternating those back and forth. Mm -hmm. Those are great. Those are great two programs to to go. If like that's your sport, that's the thing you're into. Yep. Um, to go back and forth between those two programs, I love that combo. Oh yeah, it's gonna reinforce a lot and of so strength and range. Strength. We should put that as like a. a I don't know why we, that'd be know, a great. That would be a great. I don't know. I wouldn't have thought of that as a bundle. That's it. That would be a good bundle. Yeah. Well, and it was uh, funny because the last time I was, I was on here once before, I mentioned, uh, like you mentioned, dinosaur training. And yeah. I was doing that, and that worked super well, too. It mm -hmm. seems like any of the strength-based three times a week really just carries over well for me. And so when you guys made maps all the time, I freaked out. <laughs> because last yeah, time yeah. we were talking about it. Yeah. And so it was awesome. No, that's all, you know, um, that works for most people. That's why you, you see it working so well. Um, and most people need to understand that, that – a good three day a week strength training program for about 85% of people is going to give them the best results. So now you're doing this to lead to a competition that you're going to uh, sign up for. Yeah. So I've done one already, which was the log, just a log fundraiser competition, which was pretty chill. And so now I have like a, a novice competition coming up. So kind of for beginners, mm -hmm. but so no weight classes, which will be very interesting, mm -hmm. uh, but just to kind of get into the sport. And so, yeah, I'm just training for that one right now. Right on. Yeah, you're going to have to let us know how you do. For sure. The only thing I would add, Simon, uh, would be some kind of mobility work. Um, Even though Maps Old Time does a good Map, job. Yeah, Prime Pro would be good yeah. to have in your back pocket. I'll give them to that. Um, and then another program to throw in, I'd say once a year, would be like a symmetry, Map Symmetry. Although Old Time you, does a lot of unilateral stuff, symmetries can be pretty cor correctional um, for people. like Because you're young. You're a young guy, big, strong guy. You got a lot of gains ahead of you. Um, so just two things, just a couple things to consider before things start to creep up. Cause what you tend to see with, uh, young athletes is they, they get stronger, get stronger, get stronger. And then they start to get injury, 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 you know, one after another. So, you know, prime pro would be something nice to have things start to pop up. Then you just start to address them before they become major issues. Do you have prime pro already, Simon? No, I do not. I'll have, I'll have Doug send that over to you, bro. Sweet. Thanks, man. Yep. And also, sorry, just one question kind of, I guess, related to it, but I guess a shorter one. So you guys, um, you're pretty, so it seems like you're pretty cool with combining the two. The question is how, I guess, is how do you, how would you do maps all the time and strong uh, to uh, I guess, pair them? No, you wouldn't do them together. I, I, I don't, I don't no, think. No, 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 don't do it. Don't no, do I don't yeah, think I would do all time first and then I would do I would do one after another, probably. but do map strong with about a third of the volume. So take the sets down about a third mm -hmm. um, is where I would start. 
Yeah, don't put. Bl- yeah, okay. don't you? I mean, to try and blend those two programs would get really nuanced. Yeah. To be honest with you, I'm. Sh- I mean, you probably could, but uh, Simon, we to be uh, just to be very, very uh, honest, we would have to sit down, yeah. lay out both programs, take a lot of thought, and take a lot of things into consideration. What I don't want to do is say, you know, switch out this workout for that workout. I have to look at them laid out, and then look at your training to give you the best advice. But I do know that if you follow one after another with the reduced volume and strong, because you identified as it's too much volume, which it actually is a lot of volume and it, towards the end, especially, um, that that would be great. I, I, I also know, too, that either one of them is going to benefit you going into a strongman contest. Yeah. Yeah. And so I actually like the idea yeah. of you running one of them leading up to it and That's, seeing how you perform, and then the next time running a different one and seeing totally, how you yeah. perform, and then you personally. Because there's also the individual variants. There just might be some moves mm-hmm. – in old time that you needed that you really needed that that you see this huge gain like you said in the log press or something like it, it's it, it attacked something that you really were neglecting and maybe you don't need so much of that or vice versa right so i definitely think that uh each of them are, have their own benefits that are going to support your competition i would recommend trying both and seeing which one you got the biggest bang for your yeah heart. only reason i mean the strong i i just i would like to see if this this was the case but leading that into your competition because of it it really ramps up you know volume and a bit more of the endurance uh and the durability with that so like you know timing that in terms of like you working on your building your base strength with um old time and then kind of like immediately following that up so it leads right up into competition would be ideal okay sweet all right well i'll give that a shot then try maps old time and then map strong and see which one uh, succeeds or let's see how it turns out i guess you got it man awesome thanks for calling in and then oh sorry i just want to say quick thank yous if that's all right oh yeah please just uh just thank just thank you guys for just talking exercise and training and just that's been helping me a lot in getting like just knowing stuff even just within the two years i've got to know so much through you guys and even when you guys talk about like kind of kids stuff when you're talking about with your kids and like my wife and I are talking kids now. So even you guys are setting a good example of what can you do to be a good parent? So that's always been good to listen to as well. And another one I want to mention is actually Doug. Uh, every time Doug talks about Japanese things, uh, I also really appreciate that because I lived in Japan for 10 years uh, in my life, 10 years of my life growing up as a kid. So whenever he brings up stuff like, well, I think the last episode he brought up some, some sort of uh, teriyaki or, or was it a, Something Japanese or something like that. But he brought it up and I was like, oh, that's nostalgic. So yeah. I appreciate those Japanese moments with Doug. Awesome. <laughs> right. Awesome. Say right on, Japanese, Simon. Doug. Appreciate the compliment. <laughs> Doug's bowing to Doug you. Right. Bowing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for calling in, man. All right. Take All right easy, thanks, guys. Yeah. I see you. You got it, bro. So uh, Good guy. Lo- log competition. I feel like Justin would crush. Uh, dropping yeah. logs. I do yeah. it all the time. <laughs> Dro- <laughs> dropping logs, pressing logs, shooting logs, <laughs> rolling logs. <It's> just, uh, <laughs> world champion. Uh, you know, that a hey, old time, you know, it's funny. I did not piece that together till right now. Of course it would be a great program yeah. for strongman competition. Yeah, yeah. It's so it, ideal. Dude, it fills all the gaps. Like, 100%. Yeah, yeah. 100%. That's why, too, I think it's there's value in, you know, going through both and seeing which one you got yeah. the biggest bang for your buck totally. for competition because- the old time he does have a unique side of it with like the windmills and movements. Yes. Like that. It, it addresses a lot of mobility issues and things too, that you don't have to spend so much time, like uh, going through all of, you know, our, our prime stuff. I mean, yeah, it, that's ideal if you have like some kind of restriction or like yeah. some kind of pain, but just but, to prevent it, but just prevent it. Yeah. But like this strengthens all of those. Moves. Totally. Yeah. Look, if you love our show, we have a lose fat guide. It's free. Mindpumpfree.com. Go check it out. You can also find all of us, on social media. Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. I'm on Instagram at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam.